Share Shootout brought to you by Line of Africa Insurance, insuring South Africa's future. It's faster, it's slicker, it's higher grade than anything that you know that comes in pink. Yes, this is the most vicious stock picking show on television. No one gets off lightly. This is Share Shootout. I'm Bruce Whitfield, judge, jury and executioner. You're watching CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. Now, is it true that the House of the Rising Sun became a hit song in the Encanta household after the Mail and Guardian report last week? Did Coke's marketing budget get cut after it was decided to limit the characters to six for names on the cans? And should we be worried about cricket ball-sized hailstones being dropped all over Gauteng residents? We don't know the answers to these publishing, pu puzzling scenarios. What we do know is we've got a really tired guy and a KGB agent in our wings. Introducing last week's champion, Sasha, I run with the Huskies, Narishkin for fun from Vestac. His challenger, Nick Hooter, daddy, Norman Smith from Leather. Okay, so the house rules. Well, it's that way, the bar is that way, you have to bring your own money. Those are the only rules. But seriously, we've got two guests who pre picked three shares. Neither knows what the other holds. Each has to accept at least one of their competitor's picks. The longer they leave it, the more likely they are to have to accept something they really don't like. Each has got just 30 seconds for their stock pick. So let us get started. It's been a while since your last confession, Nick Norman Smith. I think we should start with you because I'm just perturbed, concerned, and worried that you would choose that bank. Because in 30 seconds, I'd like to know, please. Are you doing the check the warrior in my eyes? <laughs> no, no, no. Was I'm, I'm I, are you no, you're just always so mean to the guests. I'm surprised they keep coming back, Bruce. <laughs> so am I, really. <laughs> I keep trying to get rid of them, but they keep coming keep back. Coming. So, Boomerang, Norman Smith, in 30 seconds. Why do you like Sanabank? Sanabank, this was the previous uh, lovely growth story that everyone loved and was way too expensive. You can now buy it at a reasonable price. This is a massive African growth story bank. They've gone through a lot of pain putting their footprint out in Africa and they've learned a lot of their school fees. So now you can now buy it on one and a half times book because there are much more exciting banks like Capitec and First Rand, um, uh, First National Bank. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not a particularly amazing, insightful story. It's just a great business at, at a very reasonable price and that's how you get great investment returns. Yeah, very good sure. on 30 oh, seconds. Look, Even though he comes here less been often practicing than you on the weekend, in the yeah. shower. Yeah. 30 seconds at a time. Right. Well, now, I hope each shower is longer than 30 seconds. Um, he's close to me than you. <laughs> so, Sasha Narishkin, what do you think of Standard Bank? Hmm, I don't know. I just think banking returns over the next five years are going to be somewhat muted. And the reason why I think is they're going to have to have larger capital reserves because there are more you know, regulatory pressures coming from you know, Switzerland, for one. Although it is interesting that Basel III the toughness of it was pretty much toned down. Yeah. But I think there are better investments. If I had to uh, you know, pick globally a, a country with the best banking regulators, plus also mm -hmm. you know, banking investments, South Africa would feature really highly Most on that list. Most certainly would, but the question is whether or not you buy shares in Standard Bank. Um, if you watched tonight with Bruce Whitfield last night, you would have seen an interview I did with Craig Bond, who used to work at Standard Bank, and moved over to Barclays Africa. He spent the last year there getting Barclays Africa battle ready to take on his old mates at Standard Bank. He knows how they work, he knows how they think, and he's taking them on in their own turf, admitting that the biggest threat that's happened to Apps over the last couple of years is the hundreds of thousands of customers that they have lost to Capitec, in the middle market to FNB, and in the business banking market, they've actually lost to Standard Bank. So Standard Bank dominating in sort of corporate and investment banking and in the business market, Sasha, mm. but uh, doesn't seem to be really taking on anybody in retail. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, the whole integration process took maybe a little bit longer than mm. people anticipated. You know, the new Boer War. Uh, you've had got some ancestors who fought in that war. No doubt you've got some who fought in that war too. Except it mine didn't duck. Your yes. didn't <laughs> duck, yeah, sadly. Um, so I think, you know, that integration process probably came at a good time yeah. because they'll probably reflect back and say... But they're not going to make the money they need to make at Standard Bank. But and that's the problem. <coughs> they're all fighting each other. There's a race to the bottom. What, what APSA is going to be doing is selling 9 Rand 99 banking packages at the tills at PIP. Nedbank, I know, did it at pick and pay and it didn't work. But the, the race for the bottom in terms of fees and all of that sort of stuff makes banking a hard place. Now. Yeah, but they, they've got some, some good, um, and they've got good, good, good local assets. But remember the African businesses, which are not really con uh, contributing very much. They've made r losses over the years across most of the businesses. Those are going to eventually uh, turn around. They've spent a lot of money in branch infrastructure and IT infrastructure, um, as I said, learning their school fees. And once those start kicking in, they should offset the, the pressure mm. that we definitely will see uh, locally with the increased competition. Bottom line. 12 PE, it's cheap. 
Sasha, do you take it or do you, uh, <laughs> do you wait for the others? I don't know, you're laughing at his other two, so I think I'm going to take this one, Bruce, because I think... Hey, how's that? Boy, he's so easy. <laughs> he's so easy. You're taking Standard Yeah, I think I'm going to take Standard because I don't know what next two other ones are. All right, so Nick Dumas with your Standard Bank pick gets taken. He's going to regret it because I don't know how he can say no to the next two. <laughs> uh, all right, Nick Dumas with you want to see what Sasha Nerishkin has got up his sleeve. Okay, Sasha, in 30 seconds, you could have taken Glencore Extrata. You could have been a bit interesting about this. That one was taken a few weeks ago. You back could have right? taken Anglo American. You I could have been a bit more adventurous too, about yeah. this, but you're going for good old solid, boring old reliable. In 30 seconds, please. <laughs> Why BHP Collision? Because I, I think, you know, you might yawn there, but I think some of the uh, gas assets, and he's folding his arms already, there's some of the gas assets that they bought, you know, they had to write those down pretty aggressively, but I think. You know, it's been shown that Texas as a producer is producing at a 35-year high or whatever. So I think gas is the next big play. So it's, whilst you might say, well, some of the others have good assets, and surely Glencore Extrata is one of those with trading assets, I think BHP Billiton are in the right place in the quality assets that matter the most in geographically <laughs> right position. I didn't hear Don't the drum. Stop cheating. Do you like BHP Bulletin? Yeah. This is dull, but it's quite reliable. Yeah, so it's it's okay, but I think you can do a lot better. You can replicate a lot of their assets. So you can buy the oil and gas, and you can buy Sassol, yep. cheaper. And you can buy the base metals, iron ore, etc. You can buy Anglo-American cheaper. Yep. So just on our market alone, you can get a cheaper entry point. I don't think it's horrendously overvalued because the whole, the whole sector is under pressure, and we realized that maybe the resource super cycle wasn't so much of a super cycle and just mm. a normal cycle. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's not the worst in the world, but um, it's a little bit expensive. You know, you're buying Anglo's at book, you're buying Billiton at where is it probably around three times book. So I just think I just think there are a lot better opportunities out there in the resource space. Is it, you're just lazy. Some because books it's you far can. Too no, no, no. Some books you can trust. Some you can't. You know. So, so which I'm just worried trust? that um, you know Mark Cutifani, for all his expertise, is stepping into a hornet's nest. You know, I don't buy the fact that. And sure, Nick um, is probably a deeper value investor than myself. And I don't, I don't buy the fact that Anglo is cheaper than BHP Billiton. Because A, for me, it's about the quality of the assets and where they're geographically located and the size and scale. And oh, gee, Anglo have stumbled and bumbled. And you know, in RAND terms, Billiton is near its all-time yeah. high, and Anglo is what, like 40%. So that's so next so argument. So no, no, wait. So you, you're <laughs> buying your share at its all-time high. No, How no, no. clever is in that? Rand terms, <laughs> in rand terms, which please. was what we pay for. Yeah, shares. exactly. No, I'm, I'm, I'm more than more than happy. I agree. Um, like for like, Billiton's assets um, are, are pretty great. Although, pretty uh, pretty although best. Anglo has some wonderful platinum assets, um, which are cannot be replicated anyway. So those are pretty good. But there's such a big discrepancy in pricing that I don't think it's I don't think it yeah. justifies um, right. the, the quality. So you're giving him some, but you're taking away the rest. Okay. So for your record record mm. level BHP, but in Billiton, my book, I think Anglo is still a sell and Billiton still a buy. Okay. Yes. Okay. You said it. <laughs> are you shooting it down? I may regret it, but yes. Oh. I think you might actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're interesting. They're putting their best chairs up front, and then the dogs below. Because we move on. Then you're shooting down. Uh, you've accepted. Sorry, you've accepted BHP Billiton. It's on the record. So we get to put a big tick next to BHP Billiton. A big tick next to Standard Bank. So you one each. Um, Frenzies going into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw them conspiring before. I think the Competition Commission should get involved and come and investigate our green room that we uh, set up for the show. They had an extra 10 minutes together. Goodness knows what could happen next. But nobody's going to see this one coming. I like it. I think it's actually probably your best pick of the day. Sorry, I lied. Um, in 30 seconds, why HC? This is an investment holding company with a great set of assets and a fantastic management team with a great record of generating shareholder value. Your two big investments are ETV and uh, Soho Sun, and then also N Nivius, which uh, holds other casino assets, as well as various other, they've got assets in Australia, and um, building a number of other businesses, and um, some, uh, some gas assets uh, in, in the US, um, and basically getting those for free. The beauty of this as well is that investment holding companies trade at discounts, and often for a very good reason, but management has shown in the last year that they seriously are unlocking shell the value with um, reverse listing. I think that must be up by now. The but television so assets. But I was so, I was so engrossed, I yeah. forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the boom. And they've, yeah, they've unlocked that. You know, they've, they're really showing that they've got a, a willingness to unlock that asset by by um, s stripping out and, and separately listing um, ETV essentially. Great. Okay, yeah. we can stop now. Okay, Fine. he's going to get so jealous and <laughs> petty, and then start scratching and biting. Um, go on. Oh, are you sorry that you that you that you accepted Standard Bank? That you wish you'd rather take an HCI? No, I'm not quite sure. No, 
I, I don't think so because okay. I think essentially um, couldn't, couldn't you then else. buy Tsoho alone if kind of some of those assets are being stripped out isn't it then a proxy for Tsoho and granted um, you know you've got some of the smartest people here in recent times in South African business who've been able to engineer things and maybe ETV will be a winner for me it's the sport ultimately so that's why I think you know DSTV Supersport will stay ahead of the pack because Unless someone is willing to overpay, yeah. Um, it's so no. You've got a nice I don't think free. So. You've got a nice free to air. The, the answer of buying the individual uh, yeah. components. If you do that, the unlisted assets you're getting, you're getting so cheaply that it's it's better. You know, we, it's it's actually better to do that. Mm -hmm. So yes, we like all the underlying businesses, but I think you can get enough of a discount, and it's all very well having that discount if it never gets unlocked. But uh, as I've said, it looks like it is getting all right. Discount. So again, can I add one more last, thing? Last point before you shut it down. Yeah, I don't. I mean, how would you view gambling as a business going ahead? You know, I mean, what it, was it Voltaire called gambling stupidity tax? Voltaire was dead three hundred years ago, and, and gambling going more since, yeah. and more and more. So Voltaire, maybe stupidity Granted. tax, but there are enough stupid people prepared to put money onto. No, the but tickets. I think um, you know, with the social net getting wider and wider, there could be a case being made for you know, people with cards not being able to spend their money in a specific place. Maybe. Just, that's a bit of one a day. concern. Yeah, one day. One day. Yeah. Well, the people coming. have been greedy for hundreds of years, they'll, they'll carry on. Except everyone, wants a, Except everyone wants a quick back. I've been, I've been reading Rob Rose's uh, book about the whole Tannenbaum scheme, and I'm more convinced than ever that the, the richer you are, the more thick you are. And by and the, the way, more you get suckered. And by the way, government needs the, t needs the tax revenue Completely. Desperately. Which is why I'm also interested in the booze legislation. It could be but more in retail. Lose track. Come on. Okay, so HDI, you <laughs> shooting now because you're a bad sport. I agree with you, Nick. I think HDI is fabulous. Right, on to your you're other... You're just wearing purple together. <laughs> uh, on to your other horrible <laughs> pick this evening. And this is interesting because you would never have touched this when it was bottoming out. But you like them when they get topish and expensive. So let's have a look, Sasha Dovishkin from Vesta Act. Why you like Super Group, which for a long time lost the super and was just group. Uh, just and they've got group. a lot of their super back. Yeah, I mean, in part <laughs> due to the ineptness of the alternatives. So railway. I in actual fact, I mean, they're involved in railway further beyond our borders. So starting, if you believe that in sub-Saharan Africa you're going to see uh, you know, GDP growth at a much higher click than here locally. They've got a good local business. I'm sure it is competitive out there, but I think there's lots of scope for it to continue to grow due to the ineptness of uh, the rail provider. Okay, that's an interesting one because he is <laughs> within his 30 seconds. Well done, you get an extra point for that. Yes. Um, Nick Robert Smith, I mean, you're arguing for Standard Bank, for example, your first pick that the Sub Saharan Africa growth story is really good, and that's one of the reasons why Standard Bank is a surefire thing. On that basis, Supergroup has got to be in there. Yeah, the difference is that the barriers to entry and logistics are very, very low. Um, anyone can go and buy some trucks and uh, we should start, start driving up in Africa. And <laughs> Supergroup did that a while yeah. ago and uh, didn't work out so well when I think the fleet yeah. disappeared. So um, <laughs> it's a very, very difficult business. Unless you're someone like Grinrod who owns the port and owns that infrastructure, then those barriers to entry start becoming high. So it's uh, not the worst pick in the world, but uh, but yeah, I just don't think it's a great business. And, and they're better logistics businesses even on, on the uh, you know on the ball, something like like a Grinrod. Okay, so it's not the worst pick in the world. That's mm. probably the most patronising put down we've ever seen on share shootout. Well done, Sashi, you good boy. Um, last bid to try and rescue uh, Supergroup from demolition. I'm, I'm not going to, because then otherwise he's going to lose. <laughs> what? Why? No, 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 Come on, G give me a convincing argument. Other than everyone else is so useless, so the cream rises to the top. Is there a legitimate reason for Supergroup being absolutely on its game? Is it the best logistics operator in South Africa? Does it differentiate through brilliance or differentiate because everyone else is rubbish? I think they're all cheap, actually, you know, as a sector as a whole. Um, you Probably know, you reason. wouldn't be out of place buying any of them, to be perfectly honest. But it ultimately depends on what your view is. I think of maybe Zambia South of what's going to mm. happen in terms of consumer, because remember they move a, a lot of consumer goods, plus also in northern Mozambique there have been some troubles there. So, so, some, some side squabbles and some, and some difficulties. Just but in the mountains in Gorongosa. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, it's lovely. Um, <laughs> other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the show? But what's interesting about this, and, and Sasha suddenly sparked something in my mind, that finally, for example, South Africa's trade numbers have been upgraded to include countries like Swaziland and, and, and Namibia and, and Botswana, those countries. Suddenly we see how much trade there is going, sort of inter-country trade with our immediate neighbors and that sorts out a big chunk of our trade deficit 
that for the first time we can actually prove is legitimate and good solid business. Companies like Supergroup should actually be flying off the back of reliable data showing how big that business is. Yeah, but you know, you talked about the race to the bottom in the banking sector. Well, there are only a few competitors there. In the logistics sector, anyone who starts making super profits or decent amounts of money is going to attract more competition and margins will get eroded You're down. You're shooting it down. Shooting it down. You shot down. Sorry about that. Good effort, though. Good effort. I thought he made a good effort. Okay, well, let's get on to the final stretch of the show in just a moment. So Nick Norman Smith from Lentis Asset Management, Sano Bank and HCI. Sano Bank accepted, and then uh, a, a slightly petulant put down for HCI, I thought. Uh, and then Sasha Narishkin from Best Act, a fine battle putting uh, put in there for BHP Billiton and Supergroup. A good, strong argument being put forward to, uh, for Supergroup, but Nick Norman Smith is not having a bit of it. We'll get on to the next part of the show in just a moment. We've got two final picks coming through. One's a dog and another one's also had some troubles. We'll talk about those in just a moment. Welcome back to Share Shootout right here on CNBC Africa. Before the break, Sasha and Nick each gave us two of their stock picks. Nick Norman Smith from Lentis Asset Management. Santa Bank, the nearly 200 billion rand bank, but then so is everybody else. Fighting for a, la a bit of a land grab on the African continent. Barclays Africa finally in shape to come back on the African continent as well and take on Standard Bank in its own backyard. We know Ned Bank is going to come on and take both Standard Bank and Barclays Africa on as well as they cozy up more and more to EcoBank. And the moment anybody decides to sell an asset and First Rand's got enough money to pay for it, they will start buying up other assets on the African continent as well and become a more formidable force. You don't have to worry then about the Chinese and the European Standard Chartered, of course, which is massively dominant in many of the countries in which you live, uh, of course, has got a big uh, game to play there as well. But Santa Bank getting the thumbs up, Sasha Narishkin saying he can accept it. He may have been just a little bit bleak about the fact that he had to shoot down HCI, although he'll protest uh, forever that he doesn't. He wasn't. It doesn't make much of a dividend. It's a lousy dividend pay. Even you've got to uh, concede that, Nick Norman Smith, um, because it's in a growth phase. Yeah, you, you don't want dividends when you've got such smart management teams deploying the capital. I'd much much rather them just carry on uh, reinvesting. So you, th you, they can do a better job than you can, is Absolutely, what you're saying. Yeah, Come okay. on, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> because that's always the big argument, isn't well, it? Well, at but a discount. The difference is yeah. you're not paying a premium for those skills. You're buying it at a discount. So okay. buying that at a discount, fantastic. Okay, then Sasha Narishkin, BHP mm. Billiton. Uh, yeah, but reliable. Ah, we'll we'll give you that. Um, Nick Norman Smith you maintains you can buy Sassel and Anglos and get very similar assets in the South African market without having to pay the price for BHP Billiton at uh, 15 and a half times last year's earnings. Supergroup, an interesting story, a fascinating story. Also, no dividend coming out of that one yet. Nick Norman Smith shooting it down with a great big fat bazooka simply because we can start up our own transport company and put them out of business. I mean, that's the theory. I'm waiting yeah. for that, guys. Yeah. We, yeah. Go, yes. on your marks. That sounds like too much like real work. Okay, let's move on to the final picks then, Sasha. Will you like to go first? I think you should. I think I must, yeah. Tell me, there's something fishy about your pick. Um, yes. Nice dividend yield, 5.5%. Market cap of 10 billion rand. Oceana, the trouble with fishing mm -hmm. is you never know where the slippery little buggers are. Please tell me why you like it in 30 seconds. Well, I mean, recent acquisition has upped their stakes, so they're now a significant player in terms of, uh, you know, hake and mackerel in a South African context. Plus, also, I think more importantly, it's not just all fish. There is a potato chips business. I know how much next kid is going to love potato chips. I know how much yours are. Mine certainly do too. And then I think there's that 41% shareholder who is none other than Tiger Brands. So there could be a premium offered at some time well, I'm not too sure that is the eventual outcome. I just think it what is he saying about our children potato chips? Maybe we should stop them down <laughs> immediately. My kids don't get chips. I eat them before they can get them. Uh. <laughs> Do you like Oceana? Yeah, I like I like the story. Well, I have to like it because uh, I have to pick it. But um, no, well, you it's don't. It's you accepted BHP Billiton, but as you played your hand, um, yeah, yeah, I accepted. Uh, it. Yes, is you is accepted BHP Billiton. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, it's such a go. terrible business. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, li I do. I like I like the business. Um, but you know, 18 times earnings is going to be is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit tough to to stomach for me. Um, those uh, you know, some of their products. I think those the pilchards. Their pilchards business. The, I mean, the allocation to actually get hold of the stock is. Um, is unbelievable. So there's massive, massive, massive demand for that. But you know, it's, it's probably the cheapest protein available in South Africa on, on, on a mass market. And, ma and chicken is becoming increasingly unaffordable. Mm. Um, there, there were some fantastic stats that came out of the guys at ETM Analytics the other day, which showed, in, and they did their survey in the four ways area, that since March this mm. year, prices mm. of whole chickens are up 35%. That's extraordinary, and that's got to be good. 
uh, for fish-based proteins, especially things like pilchards, durability on the st uh, stands. It's probably uh, more widely going to be more widely consumed than chicken. It's a good story, but um, Sasha, I'm not too sure. We eat a billion chickens a year, still, Bruce. Yeah, but that's got that's got to come. That's got to come under pressure. It has to. Much yeah. to chicken's relief around the country, yes. sitting in hot broiler houses. Um, but, but but the Oceana story. I'm pretty convinced that this is a nice story. I think underpinned by the yield, so great yeah. yield, and so you know they might look expensive, but. Tiger Brands possibly buying it out at some point? No, oh, perhaps. They, uh, they look like they're trying to, to spend their money further north, but uh, it's early days. That isn't looking so good just yet with, with their recent well, acquisitions. They, they've so been prone to paying a lot of money for acquisitions, yeah. so they might want to pay some. Yeah, look, it's, it's, always, it's always good <laughs> to be on the other end of a listed business that wants to, yeah. you know, that wants to buy. But, um, and look, the other, the other concern is, is obviously is the fish stocks are, are, you know, our sea is getting plundered. So yeah. how much more is there to, to, um, to take out? So yeah. that, that's a concern for me. So Answer that question. Gee, Bruce, what? Um, meteorology. Let me just call, what's his name? Simon Gear and ask him this question. We're not talking about whether we're talking about fish own, stocks. Well, that's, uh, uh, that's something that's also after his own heart. But um, yeah, I, I think that is a concern. Um, and I think as long as the price differential between the existing protein, because beef, look how expensive it is. You know, yeah. I was reading last week, it takes 70 to 80 pounds of feed for a 30 pound turkey. Yes. You know, how much are you paying the conversion to feed rates the beef, fish? The, the conversion well, how much are you paying beef? to feed yeah. the fish? Not These much. are wild things you don't have to pay. Exactly. So, so at least though you can maybe come up with some greater technology and, and um, carry on letting, yeah. you know, growing. It, it's a renewable resource, um, but the, sh the fish in the sea is not renewable. And with all the, the trawlers from, from various eastern countries, um, oh, th that's on. a big concern. We, we, you've got to wonder what m mothers are going to say to their distraught daughters when they get dumped at the age of 15, because they can't say, don't worry, darling, there are plenty more fish in the sea because there are there's lots of grain on the land uh, there's lots of grain on the land darling. <laughs> there are lots of raindrops <laughs> in the sky but no they're not enough fish in the sea up until the point you'd forgotten that you loved Oceana uh, but with equal aplomb you shot it down no, I do like the business but I think there are too many risks for, you for like the price it, that maybe you're paying I'll like your last okay one, fine yeah. so you like it but not enough Okay, fair we go. Um, there are not that many shares left on the JSE. Um, let's have a look then, Nick Wilmer Smith, at your final pick. He's going to be so relieved that he even considered your first two because this one, you've got to be joking. I mean, there's value and there's value. And then there's locking value up in a trunk and throwing it off the Brooklyn Bridge with bricks in it and watching it sink to the bottom. What on earth possesses you to think that it's a jolly good idea to be buying JD Bridge? Because everyone has the same view on it, and therefore the stock is just too cheap. Again, this, this is a, a mass market retail business. Uh, Joshua Dorr, Furniture City, um, Incredible Connection, Hi-Fi Corporation, as well as a lending business that was under a lot of pressure a number of years ago when everyone else was doing really nicely. They've centralized that up to, to a central um, credit granting uh, um, base, so they've basically improved that business significantly and taken a lot of the risk out. It is in a it is in a sector that's going to be under pressure in the future, but that's why you're paying 0.7 times book, seven times earnings, and you're getting uh, an 8% dividend yield. Didn't African Bank try the same thing? Yeah, but what African Bank did was they increased the size of their loans mammously and increased the length of their loans mammously, mm -hmm. which these guys haven't done. And these guys also have a better um, a retail business in, in a much, in much better shape. And I'm, I'm hearing the sound of fresh shells being loaded into a beautifully oiled barrel of a shotgun. Shoot it down. Sounds like a comfy chair that swings backwards. It sounds like goma goma. Goma goma. Come on, don't beat up and go. No, and also I think the part that Nick, if he'd had one minute and 30 seconds, because you gave him a minute, he would have... Um, <laughs> <laughs> he would have added to that is one significant shareholder that can drive the direction Stand of off. the business. Yeah, so I think that part's also quite Attractive. important. Yeah. yeah. So I think in the in the bigger picture, Nick's right. You know, but it's how often do you renew your furniture in your lounge? I don't know. My wife tries to renew it quite often, but I keep saying no. We don't have any money. Uh, your bed, well, that's for life, isn't it? Well, maybe. You know, maybe every 12, 15 years. But I think the point I'm trying to make is. The market that they're in and the uh, quick credit extension that they did give, how often are those people yeah. going to replace it in a tough environment? You're shooting it down. Yeah, so uh, whilst I think the dividend yield might be at 8%, I don't think that's 100% secure. It but that was also pressure. African Bank's dividend yield used to be at these levels too, uh, and look what happened to, to that share price. You still get a decent dividend yield out of them, but boy, but I the think share price comes under pressure. Do you shoot it down? But if Do you shoot it down? Yes. 
Thank and, you. And the, the, the no, fun. no. Stop talking. <laughs> oh, Bruce, there we go. You should have made that your first. Pick. <laughs> then you would have had more time for it. Okay, team. What is my decision, please? Because as always, I get very, very stuck uh, when we come to this part of the show. We've had some compelling arguments being made. Producers, you can talk into my ear at any point. You do through the rest of the show. I don't see why you should stop now. Okay. Okay, so Nick Norman Smith with Standard Bank, Hoskin Consolidated Investments, and JD Group. An impassioned argument being made for all of those. <laughs> Sasha Old Dog Narishkin from Best Act with BHP Bulletin Super Group and Oceana. Uh, it's a hard pick, but my producer's decision is final. This isn't mine. You can shout at them. I'm a fake <laughs> Sasha Narishkin. You take some time out in Grahamstown, which means you get to live to fight another day. I was compelled by your JD Group argument. I would never have dreamt about it before, but I think you make a good argument on that one. HCI as well. Standard Bank will have to wait and see. We'll be back again next week as we pit our winner, who is Nick Norman Smith from Ventus Asset Management, against a more worthy challenger. Somebody who has actually got the metal to stand up against his, uh, against his wiles on the most vicious stock picking show on TV. Uh, tweet me your share shootout suggestions, your thoughts on at Bruce Business. And don't be shy to tell us that you know that this is better than the pick one. Until next time, as we continue to pick out a winner and shoot out the rest that you deserve to be here in the first place weeks and weeks and weeks on end. Until next time, bye-bye.